January 15th already. I'm supposed to do a garden tour. I <laughs> so many things to do. Let me get the hummingbirds fed because if I don't, they're going to be chasing me around the yard. It's actually in the afternoon, late in the afternoon. And I can't believe that on my deck today, it was about 100 degrees. It could have been just really hot there. I don't know. But it was about 100 degrees. There's not much new from what you saw a month ago, really, except the buckets that are coming in. Been working with garlic, and I'm going to show you how to grow garlic. Finally. Garlic is a tough one because almost everything in the store is now irradiated, and that expands the shelf life. Now, sometimes they put a growth inhibitor on it, but it could be either one. So you don't know. They don't have to tell you. But I know which ones will grow. So I'm going to share that with you, and you'll find the video online. So let's get these hummingbirds fed. So they'll give me some peace. I've already put out a couple gallons today. Probably have another gallon to put out. See, I fixed my window. I made it really neat. This hangs out. And this has Velcro on the bottom. This one came off. I gotta fix that one. But I can leave this open or closed now. They can't get in. And I can put all my vegetable plants that are growing in the window back. Here they are. Walking onions in the window. Sometimes I just want a little bit. And then I've got Popolo in the window. It's really cool. And I think that's it. But the garlic. We'll get in the garlic because I'm going to have garlic everywhere. Gary's going to take a lot of my garlic. Okay, let's go on the deck for a second and then we'll walk around. Now the deck's the same, so I'm not going to do a full garden tour. Everything I've left, I'll trim down the tomatoes, whatever is going to make it. You know, we'll see. Right now we're still in winter. Yes, about 100 degrees. Over 90 degrees today, my thermometer was reading 100. But the point is... We could turn 40 next week because we still are in winter. So these little, you know, temperature changes that come in that are unusual doesn't mean it's going to stay until spring. But if the birds know better, and maybe they do, I have seen two hummingbirds building a nest. Now they're building it slow, mind you. I normally watch them build it in a day. They can build a nest in a matter of hours. But he's taking, I should say, she's taking her time, and she's been building it slow. There's one in the pine tree, and there's one she's building back on the other side of the house on the wire. She has come up here, one of them, to look at the nest that was here. I can swing this around so you can see it. I don't know if you can see it up there. Right there. But the point is, I wrapped that one in plastic. Because I'm hoping that when the right time comes, they'll come and they'll nest there. But when I unwrap it, if they unwind it and take it away and use the parts, that's fine too. But I was expecting more rain and wind and bad weather, so I thought it would protect it. And I didn't do anything else to it. I didn't touch it other, other than just covering it with plastic. I did that on my kitchen window the first year when she had three nests. During the winter, when they were gone or not thinking about nesting, I covered it with plastic. And then when spring came, early, well, early spring, late winter, I went ahead and I uncovered it, and she rebuilt the nest and had another three clutches on the windowsill. So that's what I'm hoping here, but we'll see. She may just come back in a, in a couple months when I unwrap it and just take it apart. They do that. They move the nest. Okay, let's go out in the yard. So we're in the driveway. This is usually where I start my garden tours. Everything is the same. I, got, I have things growing. I have things dormant. I have things probably not growing that well. I've got to get the rest of the turmeric out. I've got cabbage growing. And of course, I've got all my buckets. Yes, I got a lot of buckets. Did I overdo it? I don't know if I overdid it because I have so many thoughts and so many ideas on this that I may end up <laughs> buying more. The buckets are going to be fabulous. You wait till I get into it. There are so many things. I don't want to even get into it now because that is probably right an hour there just to talk about how I can use multiple buckets. 
but the buckets are doing great. Right now they're in the shade. This is a south facing wall, but they're on the other side of the house so the sun can't hit them. And this way they won't kind of, you know, get hit by the sun all day. They'll stay really good until I grab them and use them. But I am starting to set them up. As you can see all the way down, the driveway is doing really good. The eggplant doesn't have any eggplant on it that's growing here, but the plant is getting bigger. All my cabbages are growing. My potatoes are coming up. I've got lettuce all the way down here growing in the totes. Tomatoes, tomatoes growing everywhere. But that's because of the wall. The wall is staying warm, and yes, we've had warm weather, but the tomatoes were growing even when we were in the 40s, a couple weeks ago when we got really cold. So they're hugging the wall and getting the heat out of it because this big massive wall, the blocks hold heat. And when you touch them at night, even on a really cold night, you can feel the warmth from the wall, and that's what these plants are doing. So lots of things are growing, even squash is growing. I still have cucumbers growing. So it's kind of a surprise. I've got some carrots left. Basil is still growing, has not died out. My little tiny thyme plant, that the herb thyme, that's still growing. Celery is everywhere. There's so much stuff. So we'll kind of go through that maybe in two weeks. You'll see what is growing. So let's go in the front yard and show you what's going there. So I'm back on my wall. The very front yard hasn't changed at all. What you saw in that last video is really the same, but the plants are doing fantastic. I'm getting ready to plant in the totes here. I've got to set them up, get the holes in here. I know that I'm going to put the holes up. They're not going to go on the bottom because of those pine trees. They can still get above the blacktop because the blacktop here, this is all blacktop. This was a little tiny parking lot like, and like a driveway parking. and since it's covered in wood chips, as long as the roots can stay underneath something, even if it's that big, the roots can travel and they would get to the totes. So since I am finding the pine trees, I'm going to go ahead and put the holes on that a little bit higher and get all these planted. But everything's going good. I've got broccoli, and you know who likes broccoli? I've got tree colored, purple tree colored, little cuttings I've done of regular tree colored, red veins, sorrel is growing. So it's celery back there, there's still tomatoes, and then I've got some dinosaur kale growing back here. What I'm doing is I'm deciding on how I'm going to set this up, and I'll probably be moving some totes here, and I'd like to make it where I can walk in the center and water everything, very similar to my chair garden, so it's easy for me to take care of. I don't want to be walking all over and getting the hose, you know, because you use a hose here, and getting it all tied up and kinked up on things. So I'm going to set it up that way. But otherwise, a lot of that that's back here will stay the same. I'll, say, I'll keep the table. I'll save the table the way it is. And we'll see as we go. But we'll see. No hurry. Like I said, we're still in winter. So I'm going to keep everything this way. And look at this. The sun is going down now. I'm actually doing it now because, like I said, we were close to 100 degrees today. My deck was 100. But it was probably in the upper 90s. The deck can sometimes get warmer. So that's what was going on. So let's keep going and I'll show you more of what's going on. So now I am in my ginger and turmeric table. I've got to get this all harvested. I will do it with you because this is my black ginger and I want to get this out so you can see how much I've got because I'm excited to see it too. So I'm going to try to do it maybe this weekend and then I'm going to go through all the turmeric because the turmeric, see it's all died back. This is what it does. It now is taking all its energy all that food is going into the tubers now because it doesn't need it for the leaves. And this is the perfect time to harvest ginger and turmeric. Now remember, you can use it all through the year. You can use it anytime you want. I want to make ginger cookies, I come out here, I break a piece off, and back in the house I go. That is perfectly fine. But if you're waiting, you know, the plant will get beautiful and big. I had a flower back here, and they don't grow flowers unless they're in the, you know, ground a lot or in a container. So they grew flowers. And even my stevia, that died back. So we'll get through here and harvest everything. I'll do some of it with you, and I'll show you what I ended up with. The stevia, I don't harvest that. I leave it because it will come back up from the roots. I just clean it up 
and leave it just the way it is. And then come spring, it just bursts into life and I have leaves everywhere. So we leave that one alone, but we're gonna get all the ginger and turmeric out because it's gonna be too packed and too tight. So we'll clean it all up, get all the roots off that we don't need on the tubers and the rhizomes and get that all cleaned up, figure out what I wanna use fresh, figure out what I wanna freeze and then figure out what I wanna grow. That's the good way of doing it. And I'm probably going to even expand this because there's gonna be so much in here that this is what I've got this for. I can put a rail between two chairs, get buckets or totes on here and get more going. So that's doing really good. And Gary's still working on the wall. I can turn the camera real quick so you can see it. He's working on this. He's making a retaining wall. I'm trying to turn this down. That's what's going on here. And then I will probably put some totes when he's done. Let's go into the main garden. All right, the garden here is doing fantastic. I'm getting all the greens I want. I have so much tree colored. It is fantastic because I am making coleslaw. I even made a shepherd's pie out of tree colored. And we'll get into that when I do my cooking segments. This has just been wonderful. It's a little bit died back, but it's winter. Don't be fooled by the warm weather. Like I said, today we could be 90, tomorrow we could be 40 or 35. Jeez, not too far from here, I heard they had hail that were five inches. It's amazing, so many people had hail in cold weather, but that's the thing, we are in winter. Now, like I said, the hummingbirds are starting to build, but they're not building real quick. So I don't know if they're waiting to see if the weather's gonna change or they're just getting ready to think about spring. But here I feed the birds and I'm thinking of keeping this garden with more flowers and vegetables and keeping it not so colorful, but more natural. Even though it's gonna be food, more green and vegetables growing, maybe some edible flowers in here. We'll see as spring comes what I wanna do. But of course, water fountains. I've got all my water fountains I, I put here. I'm gonna make more. I love my solar fountains. That is my favorite thing. But all in all, what I really need to do now is I really need to get through here and I need to start picking all this off and putting it in my buckets. You know, I got a lot of buckets and I know a few of you have said, gee girl, how many buckets did you get? I will say I bought one big batch that was $300. And yeah, my daughter, she went, oh my gosh, mom, $300 for buckets? You know what, five bucks a piece. You think of how much food I'm gonna go grow in those buckets. They're portable. You haven't even seen what I'm gonna do with all the buckets yet. And how much do you spend a year on toilet paper? The buckets are gonna be here for years. I got a bucket right behind my camera here that is over 40 years old. My dad used that bucket in the food industry when he used to work for a pickle plant. So buckets, if you take care of them, don't yank them around, treat them gently, don't leave them in the sun empty, but with soil, watering them, keeping them damp, just like the totes. I've got totes now they are gonna be going on six years old and going strong. They should last for years. Now let's say they only last a year. Okay, let's just say they only last a year. But the thing is, I'm gonna grow far more than $300 worth of food. A bunch of collard or kale that's organic at the store, one little bunch, a few leaves could cost you three or four dollars. And you think of how much I'm growing here? Believe you me, it's going to pay for itself. Besides, Gary's running off with 10 buckets right away. He's got a project he's working on and that's his first project. So I'm excited about buckets. I don't have to use them all right away. I can leave them sit there and take them as I need them. I'm gonna use them, well I don't have any here, but I'm gonna use them for collecting leaves and then I'm going to start the compost. Even if I don't know what I'm going to plant, I'm going to throw all this in there. The way it is now, you throw this in a bucket, grab a handful or two of native soil, and the earthworms will come. A lot of times you don't even know you've got eggs in there from earthworms and they hatch. Go look under a flower pot, grab a little bit of soil from there. They'll be munching on this, and when you are ready to plant, you put a little soil on. Oh, we're going into buckets. Let's continue the garden tour and let's go outside and look at the papayas. Because like I said, there's really nothing new from two weeks ago, but I just wanted to make sure, because some of you really wait for this, and I wanted to make sure I get this up. 
don't throw this away. I'm going to put it in a flower pot until I get to it. Don't throw leaves away. It doesn't matter what kind of leaves. Don't throw them away because that is your free soil that you're going to add to whatever soil you buy and this is going to be better. Let's go take a walk. We've been busy. I'll show you this really quick. I sure hope I turned the camera on. Yes, I did. Let me turn this a little bit so you can see it. Just a sneak peek. We've been painting the back here. This is going to be my new garden. And yes, I am still making a chair garden. And yes, some people asked if you can put a bucket on a chair. You can. But there's other ways that you could do it, and we're going to do it different ways as we get into more on the buckets. I love my totes and chairs. This is going to be a whole different garden, and I'm calling this one the rainbow garden because it's going to be bursting with color. And you know what? I need color this year. I need something that makes me feel good. I'm going to probably even set up a little table and chair here and water fountains next to the fig tree I planted from seed and we'll kind of go from there, but this will be beautiful. I have such imagination as to what I'm going to do with this. But I'm not going to run and do it right now because, like I said, I think this weather possibly is fake. It's nice for now. They say about a week, but it can change like that on a dime. So let's keep going, and I'll show you what's going on. Papayas are doing great. We still have tons of papayas. Let's go over to the chair garden. I'm at my chair garden, and you're in the truck bed. <laughs> the wall, I'm not doing anything with. I've got tomatoes still growing over there. Most of the squash are not growing, but there's a couple that have come up. So I've got zucchini growing. As you can see behind me, the chair garden is still going. A lot of the plants don't look that great, but you know what? Like I said, it got so cold. I don't think you would look that great if it was really that cold. We had some nights where we were like 38, 40 degrees. So it really kind of hit these plants, but they're still growing. I'm getting big tomatoes. I hope you can see this here. I am getting all kinds of tomatoes. Tomatoes is unreal, is just growing in the winter. As well, we've got garlic chives, celery. I've got lettuce growing in there, parsley growing in there. There's an eggplant that's growing. No eggplant yet. But we'll see. And I've got a pepper plant growing in there that's growing beautiful big orange peppers. So that is really doing good. So all in all, like I said, I haven't torn anything apart, which I don't think in my chair garden I will tear anything apart. What I'm probably going to do here is really analyze when spring is getting closer, and I may do it in a month, is decide as to what I want to keep, what looks like it's going to do good for this coming spring and summer and fall clean it up and get some other things growing in there. I'm going to throw leaves in there. I may put some potting soil in there. I may just grab native soil and keep going. Every single tote behind me is draining perfect. So when I water it, it drains into those buckets in the front and I have no reason to take anything apart. Nothing's clogged. There's no roots in there from plants because well, all these trees that are all around me, they can't get their roots up the chair. If they can get the roots up the chair, we got bigger problems. So everything is doing really good in the soil I put in there, which was not soil, which was leaves and stuff from my garden, broke down so perfect that everything is draining really, really well. But by nature, when I put in all those leaves, it did break down. So something that was that tall is now that tall. So I will want to fill it. Tomato plants, they grow roots all the way up their plant, up the stem. So what I'm going to do with the tomato plants is I'm going to clear out what's on the bottom, if it's lettuce or whatever, or leave it, and I'm going to build the soil up probably about three to five inches. That's all I'm going to do. And the same thing with all the other totes. If there's no tomato plants growing or something I don't want, I'm going to build the soil up regardless. I'm going to build it up, and then I'm going to plant things in it. I want to do more zucchini this year because we ended up with a lot of squash that 
we're not that crazy about, but we like zucchini, so I wanna get more zucchini. And then I'll get more tomatoes, and we're gonna try some other plants as the time goes on. We'll see what we wanna do. But all in all, as you can see, everything is the same. So I didn't wanna drag you around here for 45 minutes to an hour. Hopefully I didn't do that. As far as the bathtub, I'll show you the bathtub. Nothing has changed there either. I have big plans. I actually will be putting buckets around the bathtub, but I don't want to do too much because Gary's in the middle of still getting his blocks together and he wants to get a pool liner, or I should say a pond liner in the last one, and then he's going to get it all cleaned up. I don't want to put my buckets in his way. Now, if he takes his time, I may put a few because all he has to do is move it. Because there's a few things I want to get off my deck. I have pomegranate trees coming up. So I want to put some red vein sorrel out here because we do get deer in the spring and deer don't care for red vein sorrel normally. So I can get a lot of that growing around the bathtub and around the ponds that he's putting in. He's putting it in because he loves his dragonflies. And so I can get a lot of that out here. I can put him in buckets and he can move them. So we'll see how time goes, what I'm going to do. It is just so beautiful out here. And I'm so blessed to be able to sit out here sometimes with everything going on in 2020 and now 2021 and just kick back and enjoy nature a little bit. So I hope you got to see enough of what you wanted to see. And we will do a big garden tour February 1st even if I haven't done anything. I will make sure I'll carry that camera and I'll probably spend 45 minutes to an hour. And maybe there will be things different because I do want to start really getting into buckets. And we'll do separate things on buckets because my mind just went this morning, bam! I thought of all these things I could do and they're just fa fabulous. Everybody's going to have their own thing. That's the thing. Remember, everybody's going to have their own way of growing things. And the main thing is you grow in whatever way makes it easy and fun for you because you want this to be a normal part of your life. You don't even think about it. You go out there, you take care of your garden and you have it flourish full of food and you enjoy it because we need some live food in our bodies for our health. It doesn't have to be a lot. As I always say, a little goes a long way. So subscribe if you've got an account with YouTube. Remember, all you need is the free account. You don't have to pay for it. I don't pay and I have the free account. You only need an email and then you can subscribe to different people like us. You can at that point hit that little bell and if I decide to come on live or put up a new video, you'll get notified and then you'll know, oh, she put up a new video. Let's go see what she's doing. And that's the way to do it. And if not, keep checking because you'll see we're going to probably do a lot of videos this year and Gary should have his video together on that puzzle that he put together in my front yard. That whole wall comes apart. It's a puzzle, literally a puzzle. And I can't wait till he gets that video up because I didn't even watch him do it. I don't even know how he did it. I have ideas, but I was so busy doing my thing. Next thing I knew he had this whole thing done and it was like, wow. I said, I hope you videotaped it. And he said, oh, I did. <laughs> so with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Think about gardening. It'll be here before you know it. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. This feels like a summer evening. It's like 70, 80 degrees, and it's already 5 o'clock at night. <gasps> feels so good. I love summer. Summer's my favorite time. The plants don't like it, but I like it. At least I know how to keep them alive. <laughs>